What's up guys, it's Tom here and welcome to a video where we will analyze the Champions League quarterfinals focusing on the English teams going out and how it's actually a good thing for Liverpool because many Liverpool fans before these ties maybe were hoping that Man City and Arsenal playing each other in a Champions League semi-final, a, a grueling Champions League two-legged semi-final would tire them out uh, more but I would counter argue that this is actually better for Liverpool because how many times have we seen like Man City going far in competitions and we were hoping they would drop points in the Premier League but we, they just don't do that. Winning be breeds winning and winning keeps momentum going and look at Arsenal, they crumbled in their season is collapsing in the pa past week just like Liverpool, they lost two games back to back, scoring zero goals and Arsenal are now out of the Champions League with a whimper, they didn't really have a chance against Bayern Munich they didn't create anything throughout the whole game but we will talk about that in the second part of this video first I want to focus on Manchester City who of course on the balance of play they deserved to go through they created a lot more chances they had 33 shots but only nine shots on target but them going to extra time and still losing on penalties I think is a great thing for Liverpool because that will take so much out of the Man City players mentally physically and emotionally they will be absolutely gutted and devastated because Man City wanted to win the treble in back-to-back -back seasons which is literally unprecedented in European football and I'm so happy that they now don't have a chance to do that because uh, yeah Man City got uh, to this point by cheating they have had 10 years of uh, unlimited spending without financial fair play and that's how they got into this position right now if the Man City owners wouldn't be able to do what they did in the first 10 years of their ownership of this club artificially pumping them up with money look at Newcastle they have 10 times more money the Newcastle owners than Man City owners but they can't do what Man City did and Man City will play Chelsea in the FA Cup semi-finals on a Sunday so it's a little bit unlucky that they don't play another Premier League game in eight days but I think if they lose to Chelsea and there is a good chance they will lose to Chelsea because Man City got absolutely knackered and exhausted uh, I mean Kevin De Bruyne, Erling Haaland and Akanji they all asked to be substituted which is literally unprecedented I think at this high level of football you know when uh, Steven Gerrard won it, was uh, in his prime dragging Liverpool to trophies and uh, to big performances and big wins I think a lot of big players play through the pain and they don't ask to be substituted especially I mean it's weird that Haaland and De Bruyne are two of the best penalty takers for Man City and Pep Guardiola took them off in extra time and Manuel Akanji was also pretty knackered so there is a good chance that Man City will play a heavily rotated team and Chelsea are in a, their best form of the season winning 6-0 against Everton Cole Palmer scored four goals and how poetic it would be if Cole Palmer the former Man City player helped Chelsea knock Man Manchester City out of the FA Cup I won them out of every competition and I think this is a real momentum killer for Manchester City I still expect them to win the majority of their Premier League games but this game will take uh, so much out of the Man City players and mentally and physically and I was so especially so happy to see Bernardo Silva absolutely fluff his penalty up he was so cocky and he made a complete mess of his penalty basically lifting it up for the goalkeeper to catch it was an absolutely embarrassing penalty and Bernardo Silva is an embarrassing person for me I still haven't forgot that he was the only Man City player who didn't clap when Man City stood for God, the guard of honor in 2020 when Liverpool won their first league title in 30 years every Man City player clapped Liverpool onto the pitch apart from Bernardo Silva so many Liverpool fans absolutely hate him and rightfully so and Mateo Kovacic's penalty was saved by Andre Lunin and many Man City fans were mocking Real Madrid that they will rock up with Lunin in goal to the Etihad because Courtois got a really serious injury now who is laughing now Man City fans because Lunin was an absolute hero he started the season as Real Madrid's third choice goalkeeper and what a story him making two 
crucial penalty saves and cr crucial saves during normal time and extra time. Man Real Madrid took the lead through a brilliant wor wear work to goal. Bellingham, Rodrigo and Vinicius are one of the best attacks in world football and Rodrigo on, in the, on the second time of asking slots home Vinicius' cross. And Man City had to throw absolutely everything but the kitchen sink at Real Madrid to try and get an equalizer back. Kevin De Bruyne scored and Lunin made some huge huge saves in normal time um, to actually help Man City you know, so help Real Madrid go through to penalties. Real Madrid only had eight shots, only three on target. So overall you could argue that Real Madrid uh, deserved to lose this game, but it was a very, very dogged, resolute, disciplined performance. And Real Madrid are the only side in world football who can withstand pressure like nobody else. Look at how many times they have won against the odds. It's no coincidence that two seasons ago they won the Champions League when they have been outplayed by pretty much every side in a knockout stage including being outplayed by Liverpool in the Champions League final as much as it hurts to say that it's an art form that Real Madrid have mastered and developed. This is now 12 Champions League semi-finals in 14 seasons for Real Madrid. Do you understand how absolutely insane that is? That they are literally the royalty, the best club in European football by an absolute country mile because of this that they can win they can go through even when they are not playing well even when they are defending for their lives for 80 percent of the games they still find a way to defend well to keep goals out of their uh, net and to also win and now this is now the third time in two seasons that Real Madrid have knocked Man City out of the Champions League and the last time they did that they went on to win the Champions League now they are the favorites because they are better than Bayern Munich. Bayern Munich are not in great form even though they knocked out Arsenal pretty convincingly and on the other side of the door Paris Saint-Germain and Dortmund will meet in the other semi-finals. Probably PSG will go through but this Real Madrid team is better than Paris Saint-Germain and they are more seasoned in this competition. Experience and pedigree, Champions League experience counts for so, so much. You could see it in the Bayern Munich Arsenal game. And Real Madrid haven't lost in 16 matches. They are still unbeaten in eight away games in a row. And Man City are still unbeaten in 21 home games. If you, if you count this result as a 1-1 draw. But they lost on penalties and I'm so happy for that. Because now Pep Guardiola still has less Champions League final appearances than Jurgen Klopp. And Pep Guardiola with twice the amount of resources and twice the amount of money that man, that you uh, Liverpool spent or any other Champions League contender spent he still only can win one Champions League and they they Guardiola went to two Champions League finals Jurgen Klopp went to three Champions League finals in the nine years that Jurgen Klopp has been in English football he has outdone Pep Guardiola in terms of European performance and that is really really remarkable and absolutely amazing and and Guardiola is a great manager but he's not not one of the best of all time he's not nowhere near Sir Alex Ferguson nowhere near you know the true greats like Carlo Ancelotti and, and Ferguson he, he is not in the same bracket as as them if he, if he doesn't win a four or five Champions Leagues in his career, then Pep Guardiola can't be mentioned in the same bracket as Sir Alex Ferguson or Carlo Ancelotti. I fully believe this. Now let's talk about the Bayern Munich Arsenal game. A lot of Arsenal fans, even before the draw was made, I wrote, read their comments on social media. They were saying, you know, pray for Bayern. This is the worst Bayern team of the last 10 years and they thought you know Arsenal will beat them 4-0 at home and then they will park the bus away from home well you know what they couldn't beat them at home they got a 2-2 draw and they still parked the bus at the Alli Allianz Arena which was really staggering that Arsenal created so little so few chances Arsenal only had three shots on target eight shots in total. Bayern Munich literally had almost tw double the shots, 15 shots and Bayern Munich really dominated especially the second half. Arsenal were very toothless and I still feel that Arsenal are missing a devastating striker. Somebody like Erling Haaland or Darwin Nunez who can 
score that that crucial goal of course Darwin Nunez is not in great form to right now but hopefully that will change against Atalanta and Arsenal ve created very very little and they just sat back and tried to counter attack but that didn't work because Bayern dominated the game created the most chances they hit the post twice actually and they also hit the post in the first game so Bayern could have scored three more goals easily in both legs combined and in the end the way that Arsenal defended for the goal that decided this tie was absolutely schoolboy stuff they twice let the crosses come in from the wing and they were like not marking players in the box but also how lazy defending is it by Ben White that he doesn't go out to the player who is crossing the ball I think it was uh, Rafael Guerrero in the 63rd minute just stop the cross that's your job as a fullback to try and stop the cross and Ben White just stands off Guerrero who start who puts in a brilliant cross into the middle of the box and Joshua Kimmich arrives in the second wave of the attack and scores an absolute bullet header into the top corner a brilliant goal and Arsenal didn't really offer anything even after they went one nil down they didn't risk a lot of things they had literally after going one nil down they had I think one shot in the second half after that literally look at the second half stats this just blows my mind I just looked it up second half Bayern Munich had 11 shots Arsenal had two Arsenal had zero shots on target in the second half 0.0 x 0.08 xg by Arsenal in the second half so in the second half against Aston Villa and in the, in the second half against Bayern Arsenal played like the Arsenal of old I mean the Arsenal fans got so used to mediocrity after Arsene Wenger left that they are celebrating this Arsenal team like they are the greatest Arsenal team uh, since uh, in the his one of the greatest Arsenal teams in the history of Arsenal Arsene Wenger literally helped Arsenal qualify for the Champions league 20 years in a row Arsenal haven't been in the Champions League for seven years and they haven't been to the quarterfinals in even longer period and also every time Arsenal met Bayern Munich in the knockout stages of the Champions League I think this is the fifth time they lost they got knocked out by Bayern five times out of five in the Champions League knockout stages Bayern Munich are also European royalty they are the team with the most Champions League quarterfinal appearances 34 times Bayern Munich have qualified for the Champions League quarterfinals that's literally more than Real Madrid and every other of the team in Europe so Bayern Munich will play a titanic two-legged affair with Real Madrid and I'm so happy for both English clubs going out it helps Liverpool because it kills the momentum of Man City it kills the momentum of Arsenal Arsenal now we will be very demoralized in the Premier League title race and that means that Arsenal are now really out of form they uh, didn't score any goals in the past two games and they go to Wolves on Saturday in a really tired fashion and they, they have to still play Chelsea Tottenham Man United Everton so they have a very very tough fixture list Arsenal and they are now not scoring goals, not really creating a lot of chances. So I expect Arsenal to drop more points. Now the onus is on Liverpool. Liverpool absolutely have to put in a brilliant performance against Atalanta. We st need to start taking our chances. I still have hope that we can come back in the second leg. If we score in the first half, then Liverpool can easily score three or four goals in, uh, in any game, really. And uh, never mind against Atalanta, who don't have the best like defensive record. Yes, the last time Liverpool scored three goals was against teams like Sheffield United, Sparta Prague, but we scored three goals against Man United in extra time. But Liverpool can score a lot of goals. We scored six goals against Sparta Prague and then five away from home. They scored three goals against Southampton, four goals against Luton, four against Brentford away from home, four against Bournemouth away from home, four against Newcastle at Anfield. So Liverpool can score a lot of goals if they, um, if they perform well and Liverpool are still the top scorers of the Europa League so I still have hope that Liverpool will uh, score two or three goals against Atalanta the big question is can our defense finally keep a clean sheet because scoring four goals away at Atalanta might be a little bit too much if we concede again then I think the tie will be over so Liverpool 
have to be almost perfect in both areas defending and going forward and I'm really looking forward to the game I will be playing five-a-side football so I won't be able to watch the game live but I will watch it after you know I get home uh, during the second half so I'm really looking forward to watching the game and then analyzing it for you guys come on Liverpool let's try and get some momentum back and now that we lost to Crystal Palace hurts even more because if we took our chances we could be top of the Premier League awaiting these final six games knowing that the, the title is in our hands it's not anymore it's in Man City's hands but now that Man City are really tired they have some injuries they are demoralized I'm hoping and praying that they will drop some points in the Premier League fixture running the big question is can Liverpool win their last six games probably not but I'm hoping and praying that it will happen Thanks for watching guys, hope you enjoyed this, have a nice day, see you later, goodbye!